Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to the second session uh, for today. Um, so my name is Mike Dorr, and I'm your host for this session. Um, so we have here with us uh, Mike Cleland, who's going to talk about owls, synchronicity, and UFO contact, arguing that the source of our legends of folklore is still at play, showing up in the lives of people all over the world. Uh, Mike's an author of a number of books, including a trilogy uh, the Messengers, Stories from the Messengers, and Hidden Experience. So um, without further ado, I'm going to just introduce Mike. And um, Mike, over to you. When I was working on my first book, um, this is going back in about 2013, 14, um, people would come up to me and say, so Mike, um, what are you up to? What are you working on? And I would, I would have to say, well, I'm writing a book. And they'd go, you're writing a book? Well, that's interesting. What's your book about? And I would have to, I would say, it's about owls, which is true. And they would say, owls? Like, what about owls? And then I would have to kind of size them up, right? I'd have to kind of like wonder if I like, should drop the UFO bomb. <laughs> and, and I usually would not mention UFOs because once you mention that, it's a tangled mess. So what I found was a lot easier to say is that this is a book on mythology. And they would go, oh, that's interesting, owl mythology. Now, so essentially that's true. The books I've written are could be looked at as owl mythology. And in a way that's the, what I've, as a fallback mode has been the, the essence of my research. And I can make a very good case that the modern owl stories are mimicking or mirroring the ancient mythology. And, and I can talk a lot about owls in their mythic role, but my books are also about UFOs. So I am seeing UFOs as a form of modern mythology and the ancient symbol of the owl is showing up present day as a sort of totem. Okay, I'm going to read a quote. Myth is the secret opening through which the inexhaustible energies of the cosmos pour into human manifestation. Now that is from Joseph Campbell. He wrote this in 1949 in his book, Hero with a Thousand Faces. Now, Joseph Campbell as a comparative mythologist, anyone in this circle must be very familiar with his work, but he has been my North Star as I proceed forward in this writing. So he's been my fallback mode to just tap into that bigger overview energy that, that he brought to his research. And so I'm looking at UFOs and owls and I'm trying to trying to address it in in that way. So I am going to make a case that owls and UFOs are somehow connected and that they are part of the overall human experience. Now I've given quite a few talks and presentations on exactly this. And what I've what I've done is I've talked with friends as I prep the talk. And I have talked with the audience after I give the talk. And I'll ask them, like, do you want to hear about my research? Or do you want to hear about my personal experiences? And they'll all say, pretty much everyone will say, oh, no, no, we want to hear about your personal experiences. So I have shared a lot of my personal stuff in the talks and in the books. And um, and and I can talk from the stage in a way that I think is engaging and entertaining. And I feel like I've gotten good at telling my story. And I think my story is powerful. And um, But for this talk, I'm going to talk much less about myself and much more about the overriding factors within this research. Um, and I will often be talking to a, to a different sort of audience. So I'll frame things for the layman, but I'm assuming this audience is up to speed with things like, like I'm not going to give a definition of what synchronicity means. So, um, and I will try to tap into some of the outlying aspects of these subjects. I start every talk and I've started more than one book with this exact same story. It's it's a story of a camping trip, or two trips really, that I had in 2006. And I end every talk with my confirmation event that happened in 2013, but time simply won't allow that here. But um, I can certainly point you to some YouTube uh, presentations where you can hear me give a full rundown of those two stories. If you go to my blog, I'll give you that information at the end. Um, on the 
left-hand sidebar. If you scroll down, there's a, a, it says um, video presentation. I feel like that covers very well covers those two core things, my opening salvo of events and also my confirmation event. But I'm going to tell you the camping story because I can't really, I, I got to tell it. It just, this whole thing won't make sense if, unless I tell it. So in 2006, I went camping in the mountains of Wyoming. This is near Yellowstone National Park. And it was for one night. And it was, it was actually with a complete stranger. And her name was Kristen. And we went out alone for one night. And as the sun was setting on that very first night, we saw three owls. Four days later, we went camping again for one night in the beautiful mountains of the Tetons, which is right on the Wyoming-Idaho border. So second camping trip, four days later, one night, as the sun was setting, we saw three owls. Now, the first time, these owls flew around us and they were pretty close. And we were like, wow, this is pretty cool. The second night, they were a lot closer. And it was, it was bizarre. And what I didn't say then, and what I'm saying now is that on both nights, both times, I heard a voice in my head that said, this has something to do with the UFOs. Now, this story, in a way, might not seem like much, right? You know, I went camping and I saw, I saw some owls. But this story, this experience, changed the direction of my life. After those trips, after the second trip, I started, <clears throat> excuse me, I started obsessively researching owls. And this happened in con in in connection with a flood of powerful, like mind-blowing synchronicities that had to do with either UFOs or owls. Now, I started looking into some memories, some childhood events, and this, this was because of the voice I'm looking at real owls. I hear a voice in my head that says, this has something to do with the UFOs. And because of that, I started looking into some events that happened in my childhood. I had UFO sightings that seemed close up. I had a missing time event with a weird orange flash in the sky. And as an adult, I woke from a sound sleep. There was a bright light flooding my room. And I looked out my window and there were five skinny gray beings with bald heads and big black eyes walking towards the house. I knew these experience happened. These experiences happened. I knew it, but I was denying all of it. I was fully in a place of denial. And that all crumbled away after, after that event in the mountains with Kristen. So I started looking into my UFO memories at the same time, I started looking into the owl stuff. And what happened is they both started getting tangled up and blurred together. And in the years after that, as I came out of that camping event and started looking into my own experiences and looking at owls, I was hit with so many synchronicities. And they all seemed connected to this struggle that I was having. And this was not an easy time for me. Between 2006 and 2013 was a very troubling, difficult time for me. And it was, it was basically me fighting that denial that this is real, that this was happening to me. Now, three years after seeing the owls with Kristen in 2009, I started an online blog and also a podcast, and I was focusing on synchronicities, UFO abduction, owls, and my own personal experiences. And I started writing about this stuff. I started blogging about this stuff. I started doing interviews about this stuff. And I, in every single interview, and every, and I'm right at the top of my blog, it says, and right at the top of my website, it says, I want to hear your owl stories. So because of my experiences and because of the owl stuff, 
I would anyone I would talk to in the UFO community, any, I was I would ask everyone, have you ever had any odd experiences with owls? And the and the people within the UFO community, it wasn't a hundred percent, but wow, there was a very real pattern of people would would say like, wow, you know, I did have a weird owl experience. No one's ever asked me this. I've had this. I had this. I have the weirdest story. And they would tell these stories. And for over a decade, I have been collecting, documenting, archiving, and and putting these stories out there, both stories out that, that people have sent me and my own direct experiences. So if anyone anywhere in the world has had an experience with a UFO and an owl in combination, they're going to find me. I'm about two mouse clicks away. You know, you Google UFOs and owls, I am the first thing on the list, and then I'm about the next 25 things under there. So I have been flooded with stories, with remarkable stories. And and in, and people people ask me, like, like, this is a tough sell, right? UFOs and owls are connected. So, so people like, Mike, is this real? Like, what's your proof? And I'll kind of go like, um, like, you want proof? Uh, come look at my email inbox. Like, that's the proof. Like, I have been getting one good owl story a day. Well, like, or most days. For most days of the week, I get a powerful, mind-blowing owl story coming in through email. And this has happened and has been happening for over a decade. And all of this turned into a big, fat book. This is my first book, The Messengers. And um, this was published in 2015. And... Um, that book was my therapy. That book took place in a synchronistic cloud. I, I'm going to be very cautious. Like, I'm not an academic. I can say whatever I want. That book, magic occurred during the writing of that book. It was it was so powerful. My second book, this is my second book, Stories from the Messengers. There was less magic in this book. This was hard work. Um this was published in 2017, and this is basically long format stories that could not fit into the first book. So uh, the, uh, the stories in that book reflect the weird overlapping complexities that Jack noted in his talk, the tangled knot. And I worked hard to try to tell these tangled up accounts in a way that truly expressed like the weird mystical aspects of the overall stories. And there was a third book, and this is titled Hidden Experience. And this came out in 2019. And this is in essence a memoir. And this is a collection of blog posts during that very, very heady period. Now, so um, you take these books, you stack them up one on top of each other. This is about a thousand pages on owls and UFOs. People ask me, Mike, you're going to write another book? And I'm going to say, if I couldn't say it, I, like, no, I'm not going to write another book directly on this. If I couldn't say it in a thousand pages, like, like I give up. So um, I may, I'm writing a book now, but it's not about, it's not about this stuff. So, um, and because of all this, because of all this online stuff and me asking, so I'm putting the question out there. So I'm asking people, I want to hear your owl stories. Because of all this, I am known as the owl guy. I'm going to tell a very short story that sort of came in early in my research. And a guy named Derek contacts me. He went camping in the desert and it was nighttime and he's with his buddy and they're sitting out by the campfire and they look up and there's an owl on a cactus. This is in Arizona. And, the, and, and they both get like, like, wow, this, this is like, they've both felt the same thing. Like this is unsettling and owls have that energy. They were both like, wow, this is unsettling. And the owl flies off. Moments later, a triangle craft flies over them and flies off into, into the distance. They can watch it sort of hugging the landscape. And, and Derek sat with me and he fought. He fought to describe the weird flight patterns of this. He said it was not any kind of conventional aircraft. And then he said a bunch of other things. I talked, so what else happened in your life? He said, well, I saw the UFO. I saw other UFO after that. I saw another UFO two days later. And I, um, you know, I had a lot of foreshadowing dreams. I had um, powerful synchronicities. And I, I had dreams of being lifted out of my bed and floating through the walls. And then he said something else. 
He said, you know, all this stuff kind of led to a spiritual awakening. And this is very common in the reports. His story fits a pattern. An owl foreshadows a UFO, and this eventually led to a powerful change in his life, a spiritual awakening. Derek's story, this story is relatively normal. Like his account is relatively straightforward. It is, let's say, easily digestible. But much of what I'm finding is very strange, like like troublingly strange. Yet there are consistencies with this within this strangeness. And all of this has forced me down an avenue that I would have avoided or dismissed in an earlier chapter of my life. So the core question of this book, the books and the talk is why owls? So I'm just going to run through owls in mythology very quickly. Owls can see into the darkness. They can fly in the forest at night in near complete darkness. And this is at the core of our ancient myths. Traveling in the darkness, flying in the darkness becomes a metaphor for traveling to other realms, traveling to the land of the dead, traveling to the land of our ancestors, traveling to the land of the gods. But in order, if the owl is gonna go somewhere, he can then return and they return with a message. So they're at the core of a lot of the world's traditions is the owl as a messenger. Um, the Greek goddess Athena is often pictured with a little owl. Often it's it's a tiny little owl. It's usually perched on her wrist. Um, her Roman counterpart is Minerva. She is the goddess of wisdom. This is where we get wise owl. That's a long time ago, present day, little kids in elementary school, at the end of the school year, they'll have little owl cartoons, thumbtacked to the bulletin board with a little graduation cap on. So, okay, Athena was a long time ago. Let's jump forward about 3,000 years to our present day here. Harry Potter has a pet owl that delivers the mail. It is perfect. It is perfect. The owl delivers, delivers the mail, the owl as messenger. This is our present day mythology. Harry Potter is the single most popular series of books in the history of publication. The ancient mythology is still alive. The owl as messenger. Uh, J.K. Rowling, if you are rolling, if you look at her name, how it's spelled, it has O-W-L embedded right in her name. Um, that's, I bring that up. It gets a laugh at conferences and such, but, um, I don't dwell on that too much, but I do try to reflect on these subtle clues. I really, I pay attention to those and I try to take those in. I have a friend, his name is also Mike. He was driving home from work. He was crossing a bridge. He's had a lot of experiences, a lot of experiences that sure play out as UFO contact experiences. He crosses this bridge. A huge owl flies up to his wind, windshield and scares the crap out of him. He, he's just totally jolted. And he makes this left turn. He gets on the highway. He's driving home from work, full daylight. And he's driving along. And he looks off to his left. And there's a hovering, flying saucer on the side of the highway, as big as a football field. And it's kind of rising up into the clouds as he's driving along. And he's caught in traffic. And nobody seems to notice. And he says, yeah, you know, when I saw that owl and, and um, saw that flying saucer, I was um, I was listening to a talk you were giving, you had given, and it was on my MP3 player, and I was listening to it in my car as I was driving. And I was like, what, wait, what, what? You, were, you saw an owl in a UFO, and you were listening to me talking about owls and UFOs? And he went, yeah. I have that. That's a, this is a pretty bold example, a strong example. I have that example over and over and over. People somehow reading my book and seeing an owl. I have people reading my book and seeing UFOs. I don't know what to make of it. What it tells me, and I'm very cautious to say that, but say this, but what it tells me is I am somehow connected to this. I am somehow connected to this. And I have a responsibility to tell these stories, to share these stories. 
Now, for me, the, the story of Mike, the bridge, right? Owl UFO, synchronicity of me, but the bridge to me is 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 important. It is a clue. Now, if I told this story, right, or to a Jungian analyst, and I didn't say it was a real event, and I said it was a dream, right? They would look at this very differently. They would be looking for the symbolic clues embedded in the dream, but this was a real life experience. And I am looking at the symbolic clues embedded in reality. Now, a dream is such a perfect, excuse me, a bridge is su such a perfect dream symbol, right? Uh, it has a symbolic meaning. It is liminal. A bridge is neither here nor there. It connects these two places, right? So when you're on the bridge, you're not here or there. You're in between the two places. It is a threshold. And that defined that chapter of Mike C's life. And I am finding this in accounts that real events are playing out with the theatrical kind of dream logic. And it is this theatrical aspect, this mythopoetic aspect that adds so much richness to the entire phenomenon. It makes an account, it turns an account into a story, something that I can tap into. I, I feel like I can tap into someone's personal experience much more easily than I can tap into um, trying to read the, the, the overview of someone's research. I had a friend, this is a researcher I respect, um, he called me up and he was annoyed. Uh, this, is, I, I probably, this is Christopher Knowles. He has a blog called The Secret Sun. He's a really powerful researcher and really, so he <laughs> contacts me and he's a pretty strong personality. And he says, your work is driving me crazy. Your work is making me nuts. Like you, you, you are not approaching this scientifically. You, you are not doing scientific work. And I, and I said, oh, what do I care? I'm not a scientist, which I thought was a good answer. And that is true. I am not objective. I am not being objective in this research. I am totally subjective. I am like immersed in this subjectivity. This is my journey. This is partially my story. And I am looking at these owl stories and I'm looking into them. And what I have found, it is a bottomless pit of strangeness. Like I thought I would say, oh, like I'll just look into this owl thing and I'll write a magazine length article and I'll be done with it. No, it has been unending. The owl is the tiniest piece. It is the tiniest puzzle piece in a huge complex mystery. And I am focusing only on this outlying little fractal, right? So other authors have written about owls and talked about owls, Whitley Strieber in particular, it's a seemingly insignificant part of this overall subject, but what I am finding is so rich. And after collecting so many stories, I am forced to re-examine what it all might mean. Something is happening, something is happening, but I don't think it has anything to do with shiny metal spaceships filled with little scientists from another planet arriving here on earth to study mankind. Whatever is going on is way more elusive than that. Now, a lot of these stories have an absurd quality or an emotional quality, or they play out like some heavy-handed fable. The owl is an ancient symbol, and the UFO is a modern symbol. And the UFO subject is huge, and I am I am getting, people are contacting me with only the thinnest sliver within that giant subject. And within that thin sliver, both aspects, owls and UFOs, it seems to be telling me and plenty of others that reality is not what it seems. There is something else. Something is happening just beyond what we can perceive. There is something deeper at play. Owls and UFOs, force you, or they force me, and they, the friends and associates that I'm working with, they force us to really ask the big questions like, who are we? Why are we here? What does it all mean? Now, I said it, I am not a scientist, but I am trying to be a good journalist or 
maybe a better way to say it was I'm I'm, be, I'm a folklorist. I'm trying to collect these stories, this modern folklore, and I take this research seriously. I'm collecting these stories and experiences, and I am trying to share them. I'm trying to find any pattern. I'm trying to find any deeper meaning, any symbolic meaning, and there is a value to these stories. And for me, as far as a life path and a life journey, it feels important to share them. And I am not a therapist, but people are coming to me and asking for help, right? So I, like, I'm, I can't offer them therapy, but what I can tell them is that they are not alone that many other people have had these same experiences. And just saying that, just having them hear that, it helps them. It helps bring them solace. Again, why owls? I have been asking myself that question, that, that big question, and, and on a pragmatic intellectual level, I have to say, I don't know. Like, I don't know why owls. Yet, on a more intuitive level, a more like internal level, I'm able to get a glimpse into some possible answers. And I'm going to list four answers right now on what owls might mean, their connection to UFOs, what they might mean. Number one would be owls are alarm clocks. This is the simplest answer. They are here to wake us up. I saw those owls. I saw those owls in the mountains with Kristen, and they woke me up. That is not an exaggeration. They woke me up. Number two is owls are an archetype. Now the owl is much more than a bird with big eyes. It is a, it is a symbol. It is an image stored deep within humanity's genetic memory bank. Now we th we think in terms of symbols, and the owl is touching us on that level. And this deeper knowing goes back, I'm convinced, to the dawn of man. There is a hidden meaning within our grand shared consciousness. Some shared knowledge is locked within us. And I am seeing the owl as a key to unlock that. Number three, owls are here to announce initiation. Now, this, this might seem elusive or sort of fuzzy, but it fits so clearly with the stories I am hearing. Owls often seem to show up just before the arrival of a UFO, as if to announce an impending ritual. Now, an initiation is a ritual. I'm going to use the example of a young Catholic receiving the Eucharist during their few, first Holy Communion. Now, a religious scholar would argue that these initiation rites are merely something metaphoric. They symbolize a profound change within the initiate, right? That's a metaphor. But to the true believer, they wouldn't see the initiation as a metaphor. They would see this change being entirely real. You go to a UFO conference, you'll talk to people. These events are entirely real. They are taking them on as something real. If you frame the UFO contact experience as a ritual, then it is happening for a reason. And I would argue that the reason is to change the experiencer. That is its purpose. And that is what I'm finding. People are reporting that they have changed because of their experiences. And this leads into number four. Uh, owls are the totem of the transformational experience. Seeing an owl can transform someone, right? So I've talked to a lot of people who have seen owls at highly charged moments in their lives, and it has transformed their lives. It has changed the direction of their lives. I would be an example. And people can see a UFO and it can change the direction of their lives, right? So they see something that, that society says can't be true, like they're, they're, something has to crumble, right? Society says there's no such thing as UFOs. I guess they say it now, and but still, there was a, turn the clock back a couple of years ago, like you weren't allowed to like treat UFOs as real. So I've also talked to people who have had highly charged, powerful synchronicities that have changed the direction of their lives. So 
Owls, UFOs, and synchronicities. Three, three, these three things are at the core of my research. And these things, these three things have blended together to the point where I'm now seeing them as one thing. And I am trying to weight them equally, right? I don't want to, I don't want to, someone has a powerful synchronicity. I don't want to weight that more or less than a UFO sighting or an owl sighting, right? All of them in one way or another could be considered magical events. Now, beyond UFOs and synchronicities, there are five things that seem connected to owls. I'm going to give these in no particular order. Um, number one would be a spiritual awakening. This is interwoven into the accounts I'm getting. Number two would be a shamanic initiation. This is a pattern. And it's not just me. This is well understood in indigenous cultures. I have collected a lot of owl accounts showing up at the time of a shamanic initiation. There's no UFO, but they are showing up at the time that someone is um, at the awakening point as they're following a shamanic path. I got a lot of stories like this. Number three, psychedelic experiences seem to be tied in with owls, particularly mushrooms. I have a lot of people taking mushrooms and having a, a like a, a, a shamanic journey, let's say, where they meet a symbolic owl. And I also have people taking mushrooms or stories where people taking mushrooms and a real owl shows up in their life as they're like tripping on mushrooms. Number four would be meditation, right? No UFOs involved. People meditating will see owls. I have a lot of story of people sitting on their meditation stool in their house. They have a intention they're meditating on and they open their eyes and there's an owl staring in at the window at them as they open their eyes completing their meditation often people will meditate outside i've got a lot of stories about that too so owls so number five is the big one wow owls and death owls and death this is interwoven into the lore all throughout the world this is common I have a lot of stories of people, most often a child grieving the death of their parent, will see an owl, like an owl, like I have a story, a guy walks out of the hospital, there's an owl on the grass, you know, the, the mechanical doors open, the owl's on the grass. His father had just died of a heart attack. He looked at the owl. He talked to the owl as if it was his father. Dad, I love you. Dad, I miss you. Dad, thanks for everything. That is very very common. I'm going to just quickly run through this. Uh, uh, Ann Streber, the wife of Whitley Streber, uh, said something that I have come to trust. She said, she said she had a BS detector. She said she, I, I know if people are telling the truth about uh, uh, a UFO story. She says I know because if it's not weird, I don't trust it. And and I've taken her that message to heart. Okay, I'm going to talk about one odd thing that has been showing up in my research. Just a second. People come to me with their UFO and owl experiences, right? That thin little sliver, right? Great big subject. People have an owl and UFO experience. They find me, they come to me, they tell me their stories. And I and I've learned to ask this question. If I if they if they don't tell me, I ask. I say, what do you do for work? And they say, oh, I'm a Reiki master or I do Reiki healing, or they'll say, you know, I just got my level three Reiki master certificate, or the, oh, I'm taking Reiki classes in Reiki. Now, Reiki is an ancient form of energy healing, and the practitioner uses her hands without touching the patient and performs these, this healing. Now, Rei means universal. This is Japanese. Rei means universal, and Ki means life energy. So it translates roughly to universal life energy. I don't have an exact number, but anecdotally, it feels like close to 50% of the people who have had both UFO and owl experiences and are contacting me are Reiki healers. 50% of the people. If it's not Reiki, it's some other form of energy healing or some healing modality or some healing practice. This is a... This is a weird statistical blip. Why are people who have are having UFO and owl experiences disproportionately involved in an ancient mystical healing practice? I, I don't have an answer, but I am astonished at this one odd consistency. 
this account arrived a few weeks ago. Woman contacts me. She pulls into her driveway. She's talking on her phone. She pulls into her driveway. This big owl in her driveway. She gets out of her car. The owl flies in a tree. And then the owl flies right over her head and touches her head. The owl touches her head. Shortly thereafter, she had a UFO sighting, powerful UFO sighting. So owl UFO event. I ask the same two questions I ask everyone. First, what was going on in the lead up to your owl sighting? She said, I was on the phone with my father. I was talking about donating my kidney. I said, what happened after this UFO sighting? She said, I donated my kidney. I didn't have to ask if she was a Reiki healer. I mean, wow. Donating your kidney, that is a, that is a beautiful, selfless act of healing. And I have collected so many stories with this kind of power. And I, I wish I had more time and I wish I could tell you more. They arrive daily and I cannot keep up. Something is going on and something's going on and it involves owls. Mythologies arose out of the owl's ability to see into the night. The ancient stories were of gods and monsters, each with a lesson for our forefathers. And I have come to see the modern UFO account as a newer version of this outdated folklore. I am convinced that the source of our owl mythologies, the ancient mythologies, I am convinced that this remains alive and owls are still performing their vital roles. Owls are messengers and messages are still being delivered. For me, the challenge is, do I have the bravery not only to hear that message, but to truly live it? Thank you.